Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game from the prestigious Mr. Dodge Invitational 2.0. It's Anish Giri versus uh, Jose Fernando Cuenca Jimenez, uh, better known as Pepe Cuenca. And it's uh, it's a really wonderful game that features, uh, well, uh, a wonderful uh, ending position that uh, when I learned about it, I was very happy with myself. So uh, maybe uh, you guys can also uh, experience that if you don't know uh, about what I'm talking about, about what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're going to get to that. So without further ado, uh, Giri with the white pieces opens with d4. And it's a very lo long uh, theoretical uh, struggle, uh, but we will get to the good stuff. Don't worry. So d4, d6. We have knight to f3, knight to f6, and now c4. We have g6 going for the king's Indian setup. Uh, knight to c3 and the bishop to g7. Uh, so the king's Indian defense is on the board. We have e4 striking in the center and uh, castles here. We have bishop to e2 and bishop to g4. So this is all very standard stuff. I've played many, many times. Bishop to e3, knight f to d7, uh, and now comes uh, castles by Anish. We have knight to c6 and now d5 striking in the center. And now knight to a5. Although looking uh, like a weird move, it is the way to go. You, you can't really go for something like knight to e5. Uh, because, uh, well, it, it, it's just not a, not a great move. So here, uh, what uh, instead of moving the knight to a5, uh, first you eliminate the bishop, uh, so you get rid of one of the defenders of the e5 square, and then you bring it to a5. So again, if you go here, then just bishop e2 guards the c4 pawn, and uh, f4 is coming. There's not much you can do about this. You'd have to free up this square for this knight. Uh, and then, for example, captures, captures f4, goes back, and this is just, uh, well... Uh, a brutal position to, to handle with black. So, of course, black will not go for this knight to a5. This is all standard theory. Uh, and bishop back to e2. Now, guarding the c4 pawn, we have bishop captures on c3. Uh, maybe an odd-looking move, giving up your dark square bishop like this. But, uh, you know, this has been tested by our good friends, the engines. Uh, so, b captures and now e5. So closing closing the position here and now asking do you want to capture Al Passant or maybe do, do you want to try something else as probably uh, later on I'm going to you know develop the queen play some like f6 maybe double up the rooks on the f file then in the future maybe push the pawn all the way to f5. Uh, who knows what might happen here. So Anish captures on e6 Al Passant and now f captures on e6 and queen to d2. Uh, this position has been reached before, and uh, there are moves that were played here. F4 is a very popular move here, but Queen D2, the move Anish plays, is a new move. So already, as of move 14, we have a completely new game. So let's see how uh, Pepe deals with this. Pepe goes B6, and that's a reasonable way to play. You want to bring the knight back to B7, then to C5, and on C5, it's going to be uh, an excellent piece. That's a great outpost. White doesn't have a B pawn or a D pawn to kick it away. And uh, well, that's uh, well, th that's a very nice plan. And also, black has a very nice center here. So here, f4 by Anish and queen to e7. Uh, developing the queen, connecting the rooks, rook a to e1, and now knight to b7. Continuing with the plan, we have queen to c2 and knight b to c5. Now we have rook to f2. Now uh, the the rooks are coming to the f file, so maybe in the future you can look into something maybe like f5. Uh, rook to f7, black does the same. Rook e to f1, and now rook a to f8. So both players double up on the f file, and now g3, strengthening the position here a little bit. Uh, and here, uh, black needs to decide what to do. Does he just want to you know keep the keep the tension? Does he want to you know maybe play queen f6, rook f6, maybe king h8? Uh, does he want to wait for white to make a move, or he does? he want to play an active move and here Pepe goes e5 so he wants to play an active move and he does uh, we have f5 by Anish going for a nice trick here uh, and now g5 of course you don't want to allow uh, opening of the position so g5 and now uh, Giri plays g uh, f6 and this is a pretty fun move uh, it's not a not maybe the most precise move, but it is a, it is a great one because these are blitz games five plus zero, so no increment games, and you have to always look for uh, 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 you know ideas like this. Uh, a nice move here would have been h4, and now you're really threatening h captures and g5, and if pawn captures, then g4, g5, and this will now be very strong for white. However, after this f6 move, uh, it's a really crazy position. Uh, white sacrifices a pawn for the moment. Uh, bishop captures on g5, and now I say white sacrifices a pawn because black should definitely capture on e4. Uh, but if you don't uh, 
have a lot of time on the clock and if you if you're not sure about what's happening maybe this is a uh, maybe a too greedy of a pawn grab, but uh, here white really doesn't have anything better uh, than capturing here because the bishop and rook are under attack. Here you just have to trade, captures, captures, and enjoy this position being uh, up a pawn with a better pawn structure. However, uh, in the game, uh, queen to e6 was played, and now Anish just plays bishop, captures, rook, captures, and rook f5, hoping for captures and captures, then he would get a nice pass pawn here. Uh, but again, capturing an e4 is uh, is mandatory here because now you're again uh, elim you've eliminated the defender of the rook here you're, atta you're attacking it three times and there's just nothing better for white than to trade captures captures and again you enjoy this position uh being uh being up a pawn uh but instead rook captures on f5 was played e captures and now queen to h6 like i said these are blitz games no seconds increment uh so uh, you, you have to be very quick. We have king to g2 uh, and queen to e3 now. We have rook to f f3, Anisha kicks away the queen and queen e4 now, pinning the rook and also offering a queen trade. And now we go into this end game that we were going uh, going for uh, uh, the, the entire game. Uh, queen captures, knight captures, we have g4 now, Anish now preparing h4 and g5. So king g7, we have to get ready for that, h4 and now h6, stopping g5. So bishop d3 attacking the knight, now knight c5 attacking the bishop, and now bishop to c2. And here the bishop and the knight are nicely controlling each other, as you see. So king to f6, again stopping g5 and rook g3. Anish wants to execute g5 here, so rook g8 stopping g5, and now king to f3. And now, again, it's a, a pretty pretty drawish position. There is not much for e, uh, either side uh, to do. You can never execute g5. Black is controlling it three times. And other than that, you really don't have a way of entering this game. So uh, here, black can uh, just go for a draw. He can just repeat moves, knight b7, knight c5, knight b7, knight c5. And there is nothing white can, white can do about this. Uh, but it's, uh, you know... Uh, easier said than done when when it's a blitz game with with no uh, seconds on the clock so here c6 preparing to strike in the center with d5 and now bishop to e4 this is how anish looks for chances he goes for the c6 pawn and now basically forces knight captures on e4 so here pepe goes for it we have captures captures and now uh d5 with check and this is a great pawn sacrifice uh, as it's a temporary one and you will win the f5 pawn and this is how he does it we have captures captures and captures and now of course h5 uh, the pawn cannot be captured the rook on g3 would be hanging so g5 with check and now king captures on f5 and now both of them have a nice pass pawn and they of course uh, need to start pushing them so here g6 uh, and now uh, you have to first play rook to d8 check however here e4 was played and uh, although giri did not take advantage of this you can actually win this pawn just rook g5 check King moves and you pick up the pawn, or if you go for something like this, then rook, uh, king f4, and now it's winning, but uh, that's uh, uh, besides the point. I'm, I'm only showing you guys this uh, so uh, you, you know what's happening, but for uh, for them to see it in a blitz game with a few seconds on the clock, it's very, very unrealistic. So here e3, king f7, and that's it, white wins. If if e2 just you know trying to promote to a queen, rook g1, we guard the d1 square, and once this rook moves wherever, then we're going to play g7, g8, and, and win the game but it's also very similar to what happened in the game uh, Anish played g7 uh, we have king to f4 and this is uh, black's last uh, well uh, playable position because here e3 was mandatory but here he played king to f4 and now rook to g1 and we basically end up with the same position that we've already shown uh, e3 king to e6 now comes king f7 uh, sorry, e2, king f7, attacking the rook, now rook to c8, uh, and now just bringing a queen into the game. So captures, captures, and now, of course, uh, we uh, have to do something about this pawn, but uh, it's impossible to capture it. Black will promote this pawn, so we just have to play the king and pawn endgame to, to a win. So here, king g7, king f2, we move the rook, rook to b1 was played, and now black also brings a queen into the game. So captures, captures, and after all of that madness, we have a king and pawn endgame where it's king and three pawns against king and three pawns but white is completely winning problem is white can eliminate this pawn and start pushing this pawn whereas black has to eliminate both of these pawns to at least try and get the b pawn through uh, but uh, that's uh, all you know all part of chess king g6 king d2 and now king captures on h5 with uh, king captures on c3 
Uh, king to g6, now there are only four more moves uh, for Anish to bring a queen into the game, and the black requires a few more. So here, b5, h5, uh, we have b4, h6, and now king to b2, you have to eliminate the a2 pawn as well h7 and now king captures an a2 we have h8 with queen and now b3 and now we've reached the position from the thumbnail and this is what i wanted to show you guys that uh now you might be thinking okay you have a few seconds on the clock what what do i play this how do i stop the pawn uh maybe even black you know promotes this pawn i will have to give up my queen for his queen and then he has another pawn then he's gonna beat me uh, but if you know uh, the theory behind this position and it's very very simple then you will never have to worry about this again and you will only need a few seconds on the clock to, to win this game uh, doesn't matter where you're playing it. So the point is uh, that black has a C, uh, black has a B pawn, and that's important. So the A pawn is too far away for black to defend it. We have to eliminate the A pawn, and then the game is winning. It doesn't matter where the the, the B pawn is if it's our move. So here, uh, Giri played queen to uh, queen to uh, not queen to e5. He played queen to d4 with the idea of just uh, you know check and picking up the pawn, or just picking up the pawn with check. Uh, here we have b2 and now uh, queen to a4 with check. First we have to push the black king in front of the pawn, king to b1 and now king captures on a7. And this is all very standard stuff, so nothing out of the ordinary happening here. Uh, the point is you now, uh, black only needs one move, so king c1 and then he can promote his pawn to a queen, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, because it's a b pawn, that's never happening and I'm going to show you why. King to c1, so now ready to promote to a pawn. Queen to c5 with check. Now if black goes here, we just attack his pawn. So black needs to defend his pawn. And now while the king is in front of his own pawn, we use this one uh, tempo to get uh, our king uh, closer into the game. So uh, while you could play king to f5, Giri played queen to c4 first. Uh, we have king to a1, queen to a4 check, king to b1. And now, okay, basically the same idea. The, the king is in front of the pawn. Now we bring the king closer into the position. King to c1, uh, we have now, of, uh, we have to force the king back in front of the pawn. So queen c4 check, king b1, and now king to e4. King to a1, queen to a4 check. Again, we don't allow any, uh, you know, uh, uh, queen promotions, king b1, and now king to d3. And now black is an ultimate tuk There is nothing for him to do. He, there is only one move, that's king to c1. And now queen to c2 will be checkmate. So this is what I uh, wanted to show you guys that uh, uh, from this position, uh, it's only important that you, you know, you, in, in a fraction of a second that you understand that you have to, you, you need to pick up the a7 pawn uh, and then the b pawn, it doesn't matter where it is, doesn't matter where the black king is, if it's your move, uh, you will be able to, to win this game. Uh, and uh, the, it goes the same, uh, for example, I will show you this position, uh, just to show you the difference, let me just uh, uh, load this. All right, uh, so it's uh, pretty much uh, the same, but it's not. Uh, because here it's not a B pawn, it's an A pawn. And here it's a problem. Here you can't win this. The problem is after you start checking the, the black king, for example, king B1, we're going to deliver queen F2, check king B2, queen E2, check king B1, queen D1, check king B2, and now deliver all sorts of checks. There is no way for you to push the black king in the corner. Or rather, there is. You can play king B1, queen to B4, check. Now black will play king to C2, queen A3, attack the pawn, king to B1, queen B3, check. And yes, now you... you uh, can push the king in the corner, but after king to a1, uh, you don't have uh, this move with your king because if you play this, it's stalemate. The black king has no moves. There is no, uh, you know, uh, something here to the left where, where the king can go to. Uh, so th that's why it would be a draw. Uh, and it's uh, very similar if it's uh, if it's a c pawn. It doesn't have to be an a pawn. So uh, you have to remember that if it's an a pawn, a c pawn, an f pawn, or an h pawn, then you will not be able to win this position with white. Uh, you know, re regard. Okay, maybe there are there are definitely some positions where I guess it's possible to uh, fix the position, but usually not. Uh, and if it's a all right, let's use the green one. If it's a B, D, uh, E, or G pawn, then you are uh, winning it. No, no problem because the black king will be able to. Uh, have additional squares for you to use to, to move your king closer to it. And here it's a draw, it's uh, the, the nicest draw possible because here after queen to c6, for example, queen b2, you're gonna start delivering checks. Of course, uh, you want to get the black king in front of the pawn so you can start pushing your king in. Let's say king a3, we're gonna go queen to d3 with check go after the pawn, king defends it, now we're gonna pin it. Now 
the black king has to play something, king b1, queen to b4, you're going to play king to a1, threaten to bring the queen into the game, check, king to b1, uh, sorry, uh, for example, queen a3, check, king to b1, and now after this check, uh, now white will think, all right, finally you get in front of the pawn, and then I start bringing my king into the game, the problem is king to a1, and you are never winning this, because now once you capture the c2 pawn, it's again stalemate, uh, there are no squares for the black king. So that's what you have to remember, uh, like you know, when this position, okay, sorry about that, some, some, for some reason that happens from time to time. Uh, if, it's a, if it's a B pawn, then it's of course completely winning, uh, like I said, uh, B pawn, B pawn, D pawn, uh, <laughs> B pawn, D pawn, E pawn, and G pawn are completely winning, and of course these pawns are not winning. So if you remember that, then you don't uh, have to worry about any position, any situation on the clock. You know that, okay, this pawn is too far away. I can easily snap that pawn. It's not a problem. There are many ways to do that. And then it, regardless of where this pawn is, I'm going to be able to win the end game. And if you know that, then, you know, you will not have problems uh, uh, ever. Uh, I even played... Um, I, I, I even played a classical game against the Candidate Master. I think it was some... 10 years ago, I don't know. Uh, and I, uh, we had we had this position, and he had the C pawn, and he was uh, 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 he had the queen, and I had the C pawn, and he was weirded out by why I was playing this. He was like, I mean, why why am I not resigning? Why why are you even playing this? And I was like, where are you playing this? I mean, <laughs> why are you playing this? It's a draw. And then uh, after uh, you know, uh, he realized that uh, there was no way to win this game, that it's uh, it's just a draw. Then he was like. How did I not know this? I mean, he knew theory, obviously. He he did study some end games, but he did not know that the C pawn was also drawn. So maybe you can also use this in your own games. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Yes, a weird board again. Uh, I, I would like to thank Maxwell T. Castleone, Tony Moat Guitar, Geoffrey Waldron, uh, Rohit Vishnoi, and Richard Black for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing with the coverage of the prestigious Mr. Dodgy Invitational 2.0, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.